Hi, my name is Yair Hershko. I'm the VP of Engineering at Zadara Storage. And um, I will uh, discuss uh, briefly um, about the company, and what's the concept that we bring to the world, a few words about the technology. I will show you a short demo. And finally, what the value proposition that we bring. So uh, Zadara Storage was founded uh, two years ago. Uh, we are a team of uh, um, very experienced uh, storage um, technologies and, uh, and, uh, and uh, salespeople. We have raised uh, up till now, uh, we have raised $7 million uh, up to date. Um, we have uh, um, gone uh, production about a year ago, and our technology was adopted by uh, Dimension Data and is currently being evaluated by 20 plus other clouds. Um, and we have revenue customers, including Deloitte um, and others. So what's the concept? Um, when we founded the Zadar Storage, uh, we have uh, um, basically uh, came to the conclusion that there is no way today to consume enterprise quality storage as a service in the cloud. And what if we could have um, provided an enterprise storage as a service with high performance and availability, with the, the customer ability to control and the freedom of choice of the storage that is needed, the flexibility and chargeback, chargeback and billing. And on the other hand, there's a need for cloud scale and cloud economics, which means that we can scale up the storage cloud up to exabyte with a single management point um, we can provide predictable performance to end users. And basically, you can think about it, can we provide a single tenant storage experience in a multi-tenant environment? So how do we do that? So we said, OK, let's, lay, let's look at the benefits of traditional SAN storage arrays where you can select your criteria for the storage type that you need. You can define the controller performance, you know, how much cache you have, which type of drives and how many drives you want to have, um, which RAID protection you need, and you can provide a storage to clustered applications. And basically that defines your uptime and your uh, IOPS and latency. All of those things are the things that you can control when you use traditional SAN-like storage systems. But on the other hand, the downside of SAN storage-like storage systems is that they are costly, um, and they are not elastic, uh, and, you can, and it, they are upfront cost. So the concept is as follows. You take a pool of resources, commodity, standard x86 servers. You put our software on top of it. And you create a cloud storage. Those are, this is the cloud storage of resources, of drives, of compute resources, uh, and networking resources. And then, as a, as a service on demand, we partition those resources into storage systems. So each customer, each tenant, can get a virtual private storage array, which is built from dedicated resources. So basically, we allocate full drives, we allocate network bandwidth, and we allocate CPU cores and memory in order to build a storage system. So how do we do that? If you look at the bottom, this is our Zadara cloud fabric. This is the, the Zadara storage cloud. And you see there a bunch of, of servers with direct attached storage. And running our software, we build this virtual storage array, which is, you see on the top has two array controllers, storage controllers. You can define the amount of memory that is used for cache. And then you select drives from different nodes. So there's no single point of failure. You select drives from different nodes. And you carve from that a virtual private storage array. 
From that storage array, you can then go and create RAID groups, pools, and carve volumes and assign those volumes as iSCSI or NFS to your host, to your application servers in the compute cloud. So what are the key benefits, the key features that we provide? So we provide an enterprise class, iSCSI, which is block and NFS uh, storage. You get full control. You have your own GUI as a tenant. You can build an array in five minutes. And uh, you get consistent performance with dedicated cores, dedicated network bandwidth, and dedicated um, stor uh, storage drives. You can get high performance and high consistent performance. Uh, security, uh, we have uh, authentication with CHAP. Um, and in addition, um, you get full flexibility of the storage system, um, which you are able to add and remove um, drives. You can add and remove a, a, a compute power as you need. A word about data security. So this is very critical for enterprise customers. Uh, we uh, tackle it end to end uh, through access control. Um, we use identity management and data privacy. So the whole architecture of VPSA is such that one tenant cannot, is isolated from its neighbor tenants. Um, we use, of course, uh, CHAP authentication uh, and we have, since you have full control of your drives that are dedicated to your VPSA, you can then shred your data uh, whenever you are done with your drives. Uh, we support data encryption both at rest and in flight. And the, o the user, the tenant, owns the encryption keys. And on the network inside, we, have, we support VLANs per tenant and you have isolated networks per VPSA. So each VPSA is isolated and secured. So how do we do that? Uh, the, the basic, uh, our cloud orchestration is built using OpenStack uh, building blocks. So as I said at the beginning, I have, we have a, a, a stack of storage of servers, of nodes, with direct attach uh, drives. And then we use OpenStack, which is a very scalable cloud architecture, as you all know. And we, used, we have a uh, Nova a VPSA scheduler that is used in order to schedule drives and to schedule virtual controllers per VPSA. We use Keystone uh, for identity management. And we use uh, Glance uh, to manage our virtual controller uh, repository. And of course, everything is with the REST API. So our unique thing is that we use OpenStack, mainly Nova part of it, in order to create a block and file storage cloud. Very scalable. So I will show you a demo in a, of um, <clears throat> OK. So this is the management uh, console where you can log in and create your virtual private storage array, OK? <clears throat> I will go and create a VPSA. When I create a VPSA, I provided a name, OpenStack demo. And I will uh, select three criteria. The first one is where do I want to locate the storage array in which um, data center, in which cloud. Currently we support today, we are deployed at Amazon, Dimension Data, and Equinix. I would select um, Amazon um, EC2, for example. And then I, in order to create my VPSA, I need to select basically two things. One is what is the Zadara engine, and the Zadara engine, you can think about it as the virtual controller. So um, which, uh, what, what is the virtual controller ca uh, capabilities, which is basically the amount of CPU cores and the amount of memory 
that is being used to process the IOs. I would select a, a basic ZR engine, and then I can select uh, which type of drives I want to have and how many drives I want to have within the VPSA. For example, I would select um, uh, three drives that are 600 gig SAS, um, and I will submit, and basically that's it. Within two minutes, I will have a VPSA created, uh, which is um, completely uh, isolated from other VPSAs in the cloud, and it is fully owned by me. So if I'm... Um, going to a VPSA that I've previously created. Um, this is the GUI that you get when you spawn your VPSA today. Uh, as you can see, I can, uh, I can look at the list of drives that exist in my VPSA. This one currently has 10 drives. Um, I can remove a drive if you want to give it back to the cloud and stop paying for it. Um, for example, I will take this drive and I will remove it, and this is no longer belonging to this uh, VPSA. Right. Then I can go and uh, create a RAID group. So currently I have a single RAID group. I can go and create another RAID group from the drives that I've selected. For example, I can create a RAID 1 with two drives, for example. And from that drives, I can go and create virtual volumes, assign those volumes to servers, hosts. And in addition, I can manage, um, I can see the virtual controller um, and their characteristics. So this is uh, how the VPSA GUI looks like. Um, now, the last thing that I wanted to show is uh, in the, the next uh, release of the VPSA, which is uh, coming in a, in a month, uh, we are adding uh, capabilities of snapshots and remote mirroring. So um, in addition to the previous uh, management capabilities that you saw of creating rate groups, creating pools, creating, um, sorry. In addition to the capabilities of creating RAID groups and pools and carving volumes, in the upcoming uh, release, you will be able to create snapshots, define snapshots uh, policies where you can create and delete snapshots automatically and create remote replication. Okay, I see I have connectivity issues. Um, <clears throat> okay. So um, where does the data fit in enterprise storage? So we are a software as a service, um, which is similar to SAN, but is as a service. Uh, it is elastic, um, and it provides low latency, high IOPS for your database and other mission critical uh, application. You can deploy it on premise or off premise. And that's our unique proposition. Today, we are available at uh, Amazon uh, Web Services. We are available at Dimension Data and in Equinix. So just to summarize it, the service provider unique value proposition is to provide an enterprise storage as a service, to build a, 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 a storage a cloud with with enormous scale that supports uh, thousands of storage nodes and thousands of petabytes of storage. Um, cloud economics, um, it's a software-defined storage. You can provide your customers, your end users, a, a single tenant experience within a multi-tenant multi environment. And it's a traditional SANAS benefits plus the cloud elasticity and ecosystem.
from the end user perspective, uh, the value proposition is consistent performance, uh, high performance. You can do application clustering. Um, you have full control over your storage and you own your own encryption. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.